What's up, everyone? I'm Jim Guy, your host, and I want to welcome you to the BibleCast. For those of you who are new to the BibleCast, we are a nonprofit charity organization based off of four principles, encouragement, empowerment, discipleship, and charity. Every Wednesday, I send out this Christian video podcast in hopes that we can encourage one another to live out a healthier life of discipleship through living out God's Word. On our website, there's a short but very powerful daily devotional, and speaking of God's Word, I'd like to start with an insert from yesterday's devotional. The author was discussing the parable of the sower in Matthew 13, 1 through 9, where the sower throws down uh, seeds, and Jesus said that some fell to the wayside, and some fell on stony, shallow ground, and some fell on thorns, and were choked out, and some fell on good ground. Christ identified these three unreceptive attitudes in his parable. A closed mind, seeds that fell by the wayside, a superficial mind, seeds that fell on stony, shallow ground, and a distracted mind, seeds that fell on soil with weeds that were choked out. And then he said, so pay attention to how you listen. Those who understand these mysteries will be given more knowledge. However, some people don't understand these mysteries, and even what they think they understand will be taken away from them. Today's topic is dry places. I believe the Holy Spirit led me to this topic because last week I was struggling with a feeling of, let's say, a lack of passion, lack of zeal, if you will. With life's everyday woes, it felt like the challenge was to just get focused on God more, and my energy was being drained from work and dealing with challenging situations just kept piling up on me. It felt like I was a little bit like that ground with the thorny weeds choking out all the things I've learned. God was letting me walk through a small dry spell to remind me of the dry place He pulled me out of, a place completely void of any relationship with Christ. Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. I'm telling you, you can feel the flowing of Christ within you when you learn to trust Him and truly surrender to Him. For work, I have an outside job. The summer months get extremely hot out there, and you lose your energy pretty fast when you don't stay hydrated. It's amazing how you can actually feel the energy return to your body when you drink a bottle of water. If you go too long without it, you start to cramp up. Your muscles atrophy, and you can't move. That's the exact same thing that happens to anyone in life if they don't nourish their spirit with Christ. They are dry, barren, and lacking spiritual nutrients. Their hearts are hardened and void of life, like an old sponge just cramped up. People who live in dry places are also subjecting themselves to the ruler of this world. Did you know that demons walk among the dry places seeking where they can take up residence? Matthew 12, 43 says, When an unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest. Why do you think so many people who don't live in Christ are so angry all the time and hateful? They're not being nourished. I'm going to read something to you. It's a story in the Bible in John 4 uh, about a woman who, she wasn't a Christian and wasn't supposed to really be talking to Jesus or any other Jew for that matter. Uh, her religion was full of pagan gods and weird worship ceremonies. She meets Jesus at a drinking well, and the story goes like this. He came to a city of Samaria, which is called uh, Sichar, near the plot of ground where Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well, and it was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. When the woman of Samaria uh, walked up, she said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it was who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, 
and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus told her, I am the living water, and I'm here to tell you that the There is no other way to escape living life in dry places besides being nourished by the living water of Christ. You can try to substitute Jesus like so many other people do, but you will never be filled. You will always have needs and desires that you cannot fulfill. Jesus said, whoever drinks of the water I shall give him will never thirst again. Once you finally submit to his love and his purpose for your life, you will find you won't need anything else. All the things you held on to when walking through dry places are meaningless. They're just dust. But you've got to get thirsty. You have to understand that this life is very short and realize that we're all going to be held accountable one day for every empty word, every dead decision, and every dry lifestyle. You do not want to be there standing alone in front of the judgment seat of Christ and have to say, I always believed, but I was empty. I always knew, but I didn't want to be filled. I had eyes, but I really didn't want to see. You were always there, but I was dry. Why would any Christian want to live life in dry places? The only thing attracted to dry places is the evil of this world. And as a Christian, we shouldn't have any part to do with that. The Holy Spirit is just the opposite of that. That's the living water that will spring up in you if you would only ask Him to. When Jesus said, whoever drinks of the water I give him will never thirst, He also said it will become in him a fountain springing up into everlasting life. Today, I want to encourage you to be like that lady who met Jesus at the well. She said, give me some of the living water so I will never thirst again. She wanted filled by the living water of life that doesn't stop flowing. She wanted her cup full to the top and flowing over. And let me tell you something. When Jesus fills your cup, it flows over to the point other people get hydrated. Amen? Get hydrated today. Hold out your hands. Hold out your cup. Open your heart. Whatever you need to do to receive His holy living water, do it because it's personal, y'all. Not everybody's going to get some, but today it's for you. Wherever you are right now, just ask Jesus to fill you with His Holy Spirit to take you out of the dry places and into a thriving and hydrated relationship with Him that you've never experienced before. Let go of the past, let go of the image, and let go of yourself to rest in Him. May the Spirit of peace fall on you and your household, and mercy and grace fill your life for eternity. God bless everyone. May God bless us all. Have a wonderful rest of the week.